We're back with the breakfast and plus TV Africa. It's time for us to go through the papers. Chris Kende Wandu joins us this morning. Chris, thank you for joining us. We really do appreciate your time. Always a uh, compliment of the season. Good morning. It's good to be on the program this morning. Good yes. Morning. All right, then. Let's quickly take a look at um, the Punch newspaper. Rising attacks, vote buying, threatened polls, INEC cries out. These are the issues ahead of the 2023 elections. Uh, commission says violence may mar election. Prevent presidential poll winner from emerging. Electoral body plans supplementary budget to replace destroyed buildings, equipment, others. Now, I think this was also a focus for us. I don't think it was yesterday. IGP EFCC boss warns politicians against inducement. Survey puts 33 states on vote buying watch list. Wow. Kofi, what does that I mean? I'm sure that you know our guest will be sharing his thoughts, but I'm already taken aback if you have 33 states out of 36, including the FCT. Court stop in Mephili's arrest. Groups lack or back a CBN governor. Naira redesign will affect poor Nigerians. SMEs, uh, that's what the World Bank is saying. Again, federal government begins 11 power projects, plans 3,750 megawatts generation. I mean, we should be moving beyond this when you look at um, the population as a country. L money laundering, Okupe pays 13 million naira, escape two year jail or jail term. Uh, that's how the punch uh, captions it. But we will move away uh, for the want of time to all the papers. All right, let's quickly look at the next uh, paper this morning. And, of course, we're looking at the Nation newspaper uh, with the following headlines. Um, the lead one there, workers to get better deal, uh, Tinubu assures NLC TUC. Workers to get better deal, Tinubu assures NLC TUC. Uh, how we will stop vote buying by IG, INEC, uh, Bandit Scale 28 in Southern Kaduna, um, Petro scarcity persists as motorists grown, obese campaign DG uh, jail two years for money laundering. That's not the whole story. Uh, we'll look at that as we go on. Well, let's move away from uh, the punch, punch newspaper, the Nation newspaper, and we quickly take a look at uh, the Guardian. The Guardian says APC failed on forty thousand megawatt promises. Um, R rationing of 4,000 megawatts. And stakeholders insist Buhari failed in sector despite 1.7 billion intervention, $3 billion loan, Nigerians paying for darkness. Uh, sector was in the last seven years. There's a lot of thoughts as regard, you know, the power sector. Politicians are unhappy with moves to block vote buying, says Einek. How can these things be? Right. Well, that's the much we can take this morning on the Guardian paper. Uh, we'll look at more papers uh, as we, we proceed, um, but we want to bring in our guests at this time because of want of time, uh, Chris Kendo Wanda. Chris, good morning to you once again. Um, the situation with the uh, DG of the OB campaign organization has uh, gotten a lot of people talking. Um, yes, the papers are saying he was jailed two years for money laundering. Uh, the two years concurrently, uh, it's not just one one two-year sentence he had i think two two-year sentences uh on uh counts 30 34 to count 59 that's 26 counts in all and uh 500 000 per count we had a total of 12 million naira he was able to pay the amount of money the fine that they gave him uh for each count between before 4 30 p.m or by 4 30 p.m yesterday and avoided uh, being handed over to the officials of the Nigerian Correctional Services to be taken uh, to Kujay Prison to spend uh, uh, some the next two years. Well, what are your thoughts on this? Is this does this cast a bad shadow on the Labour Party and Peter Obi himself, as some are saying? Yes, Kofi. As far as the law is concerned, as of this morning, uh, Doctor Doyo Kupe is an ex-convict. He has been convicted by the court for it's not no it's no longer an alleged an, an allegation but it's a total conviction of a constituted court in the federal republic of nigeria so as of this morning it's an ex convict and i want to believe that uh, if the labor party knows what is good for it and um, 
the Labour Party presidential candidate who has been uh, preaching on the issue of uh, corruption, uh, integrity, and the likes. And uh, wants Nigerians to believe him and take him seriously. He has to immediately, as of this morning, disengage Dr. Doi Okupe as the Director General of his uh, campaign organization. That in itself is a very, very huge setback. And um, uh, he has no moral right to be with Peter B and remain the DG of that campaign organization because anything that will be said, said now will be aligned and will be compared to uh, the person of his director general. And he who comes to equity, as we say in law, comes with great clean hands. So uh, it's quite unfortunate. This is a case that has been up for some time. He has led to have. Uh, engage in money laundering, running to about 702 million uh, naira. At the end of it all, according to what we read, he was able to um, complete his bail out and uh, got his bail with about 30 million naira yesterday. But that's been, as he said, if he was bail, the fact is that he remains a convict. A convict. And if I, my uh, intellectual capacity is me right, as an ex-convict, he cannot even uh, participate or uh, stand in an election for some years, um, but that is left for uh, all other lawyers to be able to uh, diffuse. But as of this morning, uh, I personally feel that Dr. Doyo Kubwe should be relieved of his position. If it will be really want to uh, get as much support, especially with the kind of movement he's moving um, towards the 2020 election. Well, the next question would be whether this would affect, you know, the uh, Labour Party in terms of uh, how they are being perceived and also the outcome. I mean, how people will vote ahead of, you know, the 2023 elections, especially when uh, it feels like we're tilting towards integrity, uh, casting or morality. I mean, morality as a yardstick. Uh, for the 2023 elections. With this particular happening or event that has actually occurred, do you think that it would it would uh, take a toll on the Labour Party? It would also affect how Nigerians vote. In law, we say there's a difference between morality and law. Um, morality is one thing, in law is another thing. Is that morality is, is more of a perception of what people feel about you. And uh, as I already said uh, in my opening statement, um, the perception Nigerians will have with it will be um, will change from today if he does not do the right thing, or if the party uh, did not do the right thing by relieving the director general of um, of the campaign organization. Because if they refuse to do it, that means that they have indirectly um, behind him and supported his act, which is uh, which is not good enough for the campaign. I think the campaign team will do itself a word of good by easing out um, uh, Doi Okupe as a teacher of that campaign. He can be sent to other um, committees where he can be working silently. The big arrowhead and the face of the campaign team is a big moral question, and uh, that in itself will be a very big challenge. Whether that will make people to, uh, to affect people's big chances is neither here nor there. Don't forget that people are not voting for Doi Okupe. They are going to vote for Peter B. But I don't think he needs that moral body for now. All right. But let's quickly look at the punch now and talk about, you know, the energy issue. Uh, the federal government has said that, you know, she has plans of um, projection of about 3,000 megawatts with the new um, power plants, injecting it into the system. Do you think that this would actually in any way, you know, help the power situation of the country, especially when we're looking at, you know, 211 million Nigerians, approximately. Well, it is neither here nor there. We have currently about 4,000 and we are injecting 7,000, um, yeah, 7, and 3,000 more to make it seven. Um, that's a good one. That's close to about 60% um, or thereabout. But that is not an issue for me because one thing is to generate and thing is to distribute. If the distributing uh, channels don't have the capacity to be able to carry at what you are generating, then that's probably that's why you normally have outages. So, if the distribution channels can only carry about five thousand, you are generating seven thousand, then that becomes an issue. Um, our problem has not really been. I don't think our problem has been that of generation. I know that at a point we are generating that, 
but the capacity to be able to channel that through the distribution uh, funnels and to get to homes is where the problem is. So what we did first and foremost is an expansion program on the distribution channels so that we can be able to have more capacity to be able to take more from the uh, from the uh, from the generation. And if you look at what um, the guide and hazards is um, cover needs. He says that the APC government failed his promise to generate or uh, generate and distribute 40,000 uh, megawatts. This was the promise. Now we are talking about um, 4,000. That is what they even made about 5,000. <laughs> and they are uh, living within the next few months. Uh, they promised to generate at least to be able to uh, generate about 10,000 every year. That was the promise APC made in 2015. But now, they are neither, they, they couldn't even sustain the one that they have. So, that is the issue for me. And Nigeria has been made to pay through their noses uh, for electricity that, that they don't even use. Estimated bill since the order of the day, people are paying for only a few houses, um, which I doubt is up to 30%, have uh, prepaid meters. Others just live on estimated bills. That even for 25 days out of 30 days, if you don't have electricity, you still see this um, electricity companies coming to BU. And also, the um, the discos are also having issues repaying their loan, which is why right. from week, some days back, um, the government came out with a policy that um, the indebted banks should be able to take over some of these discos. And I know that some of them are already been taken over, if not totally taken over. I know the uh, Ibadan electric electricity having serious issues. A bank wanted to take it over. That of Abuja has been taken over by a renowned bank in Nigeria. And that is the issue we are having. When we went into privatization during the good Lodge time uh, era, nobody did the, did the due diligence to make sure that they have the capacity in terms of funds and ability, technical ability to handle this issue. And that is what is uh, we are facing and various challenges we are facing. All right, let's uh, stay with the nation newspaper. I mean, I face this situation myself. Uh, um, petrol scarcity persists as motor is grown. The queues are still with us in Lagos. Uh, Magazines are seeking XD allocation. It seems uh, the DSS is, is turning out to be uh, all back and no bite. Uh, what are your thoughts on where we are right now? Well, while we are still on the EFCC, let us also talk about that. If ESPC is another having a uh, Another round of battle now with the governor of the central bank. Yes, I know that the, EFC, um, the DSS issues um, an ultimatum to marketers a few weeks back, and I think it was on this program where you're another channel there that I was talking about that that was just an empty threat. There's nothing DSS can do about it because they know what the problem is and to challenge and face the problem as it squarely and have scarcity. And that we'll be able to bring up our refineries to be up and running. We continue to depend on fuel importation as we go close to about 100% importation. Then the DSC does not, DSS has no capacity to be able to ask marketers to supply. Are you going to supply what you don't have? No, it's not possible. So uh, I said that that was just um, it, it a hot air that the DSS uh, was blowing. And I'm right about that because we're just barely to this 20th, we have barely put this to Christmas. And Nigerians are still finding it difficult to get well across. If it's biting this hard in a state like Lagos and Abuja, you can imagine what is happening in my state of India and other remote states um, outside um, the major cities of Nigeria. And that is where the problem is. And that we jeopardize that with the issue between the DSS and the governor of Central Bank. I, I read this morning that a court, a high court sitting in Abuja, have um, stopped um, the, EFS, um, the DSS from arresting. Um, MFLA. The, the governor, yes, Governor MFLA. That's a report coming out this morning that the court in Abuja has stopped that and said that DSS does not have the right to do that. That if they want to arrest him, you don't need to come to court. You can go and arrest him and take it, but ask him to court to mandate it to arrest the, um, the CBN governor on Trump charges of terror, supporting terrorism is a heavy accusation. and. Um, that they are not going to give that directive. But that, to me, is a big issue. And that, in itself, is going to affect our monetary policies, as well as the, the, uh, what the central bank is doing now, with the issuance of the new NARA withdrawal of old bonds. And uh, I heard you and uh, be talking about this morning about the new NARA groups, which are not even easily made available to the banks. Uh, but, uh, Mercy, uh, you see, you have not gotten it. 
this is the new Nara note. I've got it. Uh, uh, I've got it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm talking about it. No, I mean, this is. I got some yes. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I just stick, no, stick but, it through the screen? Like, I'm trying to I take mean, it through the grab, screen. Grab, 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 I'm just grab, trying grab. to, but it's not working. Yes. Grab. That is, yes. That All is right. best. I, I will tell you for Chuck Kofi that uh, getting it through the bank is very difficult. I was at the bank. I have to insist that must they give me this. You know, and they said they can only give me 5,000 naira after what I asked. But um, that is the problem. So I should be looking at that, that is Lagos, which is why some of us are saying that this policy being introduced by the government of Central Bank will not, may not fly as quickly as it, if you are putting a cap date of 31st of um, January as a cap date for withdrawal of old naira notes. And the Naira note, as of today, 20th of December, has not even gone around. We are talking of Lagos. I'm talking of heart of Lagos. Then you can imagine what happens and uh, the other states of the All right. But to talking about, about the Naira, I just sort of shipped this in very quickly. Um, Ghana has, has its issues as well. Um, Why else are we hoping that there won't be a scarcity of, of funds in the banks and we we'll see the kind of queues, you know, in, in Nigerian banks like we saw in Argentina and Greece. Uh, in Ghana, they're having a, a cash crunch and the Ghanaian government has suspended payment of foreign debt. It's, it's getting worse for, for the Ghanaian economy. What are your thoughts on what's happening uh, in next door? Yes, um, they're almost having the same issue Nigeria is having. But I think Ghana is a much, much better position than it. If you look at our debt profile, um, if we, as of last time we are looking about um, close to about 40 trillion naira, that is huge. And the problem we are having, uh, which Ghana is seems to be facing now, is also that we are not paying back the debt. We are only paying interest on the debt. And these are loans that were collected, the um, majority of it were collected under this government. And this government is leaving about six months. That is why I've always said that I pity whoever is going to pay over from President Mohamed in 2020, whether APC or PDP or Labour or NNPP, whichever government is going to take over. We are going to see a paradox of so many revelations that is going to come true. It might even be worse than what we had during the uh, good luck to Nathan. The only way the go this government can be able to sustain its level of integrity is if APC win back. And if they do, that means you know they want to cover themselves and um, and just have a wrap on it and try to correct some of the uh, anomalies. But we are in serious, severe situation. And Ghana is also the largest in facing that. But our problem is self inflicted unlike that of Ghana to the largest thing. Because what, what the problem we're having is that we are not doing what we're supposed to do. If we're exporting as much as we're supposed to do, instead of relying only solely on oil, or close to about 80% of our foreign energy, foreign energy, if we have diversified our uh, energy into areas like uh, mining, like agriculture, and the rest of them, we would have been any more. So many countries are in prosperous uh, nature, especially oil producing countries. Go and see what Aramco is doing in Saudi Arabia, how much they're making, and other countries are into uh, export, uh, exportation of um, crude oil. Ours, instead of making more, we are producing so much, uh, practically on a daily basis at the rate of almost 5,000 per. Um, um, per day that have been stolen, and we are not even meeting our public uh, uh, We should have been in a more better position, like uh, a country like Angola, uh, which is also depending seriously on the export of uh, uh, crude oil and the rest of them. But uh, we are not doing the right thing, that is why we find access. Um, but Gaza is a small country, a country of um, under 30 or 40 million, I can't remember they are testing. But, uh, Nigeria has to do the right thing, and I hope that in the coming months our leaders will be able to do the right thing and make sure that uh, they don't continue going around this. Time. The poverty level we have come to say is, is almost about uh, over 130 million Nigerians under poverty level. That is a huge uh, population. Well. I mean, I wish we had more time to talk about some of that issue, especially the concerns of INEC, uh, the increasing attacks, and also the issue of vote buying. Some states have been flagged as, uh, you know, likely and uh, has been identified as, you know, flashpoints for a vote buying, 33 of them. But Chris Kane, the one who hopefully were able to have this conversation as we inch closer to 2023. Thank you so much for being part of The Breakfast. I'll see you the other side of Christmas. Have a wonderful Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, you know, you know, we, you can send some of those narrow notes to us so that we can look at it well and understand. Uh, what, what are you? We, up we, to? we call it, invest, we call it investigative journalism.
Let me let me use it first and see how worth it is. <laughs> <sharing. laughs> All right, Chris. Know, know, know. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you so much. Thank it's still the breakfast Thank and plus TV Africa. Up next, we're looking at the cost of cooking gas uh, and uh, the efforts by consumers to ensure government does the needful, make it more affordable and available to Nigerians. Stay with us. <laughs>